Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Phil McKinney, lead pastor of Believers Christian Church in Eagle. Today, I'm joined with John Lutman, one of our associate ministers. And today, uh, we're going to do the best we can to minister through technology. Uh, if this is home for you, church, welcome, greetings. If you're joining us from somewhere around the country or even around the world, thank you for taking time uh, to join us today. You know, I had a spiritual mentor years and years ago that used to say, Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be broken. And today we're doing the best we can to be flexible with uh, the challenges that we're facing. But I do believe that God has a word for us, and uh, we're not without hope. And uh, the challenges are not here to destroy us, but truly I believe they're here to make us stronger. Amen. 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 Um, we're going to try to follow a little bit of a protocol that we do um, when we're in our normal gathering. So church, believers, family, if this is home for you, I'd like to invite you or encourage you uh, to visit our website. Uh, you can do online giving to make sure the ministry is continued to be supported, uh, both the, the budgetary needs and our, our food pantry. We, get, we gave away a lot of food last week, and I think that that's going to increase over the weeks to come. So your, your generosity is important and appreciated. I do want to encourage you with the scripture. That's what we do when we talk about money. We want to make sure we get the money thing right. And uh, when, there's, when there's fear involved, when there's opportunity for us to uh, be intimidated, uh, we can try to hold back sometimes. Yeah. And I want to I tell you that this is not the time to hold back. And I, I mean this for those that are attending believers as their home church, but also for those that are calling other places home, this is not the time to hold back. I want to I encourage you by some strong wording that the Apostle Paul uh, says to Timothy in his first letter, let me read it to you. It's in 1 Timothy chapter chapter 5, verse number 8. I'm going to read to you from the, the NIV. He writes, Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Wow. I mean, that's a strong phrase. And, and the, the, the part that I, I extract from this that I, I want to encourage you in is that if God would say within the inspired scriptures that the person who doesn't take care of their own family is worse than someone who doesn't even believe, well, he would never put something on us that he wouldn't hold right. himself to. Right. So if we understand that we are the sons and daughters of God and that he's our heavenly father, that he is going to continue to take care of us, right. provide all of our needs. Amen. And as our uh, as our act of faith, we bring a portion of that to worship him. I don't want to become that dam that stops the flow of God's blessing. Now more than ever, uh, we need his favor and we're believing for his favor. So we're going to pray right now over the offering and thanking God for what he's doing uh, in your life and what he's continuing to do through the ministry not just believers, but for the church around the world, capital C, the body of Christ. Yeah. So Father, every person right now, as they sow into your work, God, it's from a heart and an overflow of generosity. This is an opportunity for us to continue to reflect your goodness and stand now in firm faith that you are a provider and that every promise that you have for us is true. Yes. God, we declare that over every person, God, every household, each one of our entrepreneurs and business owners, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, feel free. It would make us feel a little bit more like home if you interact. Uh, we're praying that you're gathering around your, your television, your screen with your family. And so if we say amen, you can go ahead and give us an amen, and we'll just receive it by faith amen. that we're here. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me give you a few announcements, things coming up this week uh, as far as our church goes. Uh, we're going to continue to move forward with some plans to meet and make available our conference room every day, Monday through Friday at noon. Um, there's not a specific agenda, but mostly my concern is that we have a place for people to get away. Um, let's face it, you know, there's a lot of parents that are at home. Yeah. And uh, I know your kids are as pure as the wind driven snow and they're doing everything that they're supposed to, right? Wink, wink. Uh, if you need a break. You know, step out for a little bit, uh, just get some conversation, a cup of coffee. Let us pray together. Uh, I'm going to work with some of our volunteers, our musicians. Maybe we can do some worship together. But uh, this is a great opportunity for us to stay refreshed, to stay encouraged. I, I was thinking of this analogy. If you are a runner and in a marathon, for example, 
you'll run miles and miles before you get to your your finish line. And when people are along the way cheering you on, they don't hand you a, a full-size glass like this or a bucket of water. They, they give you just a little shot glass. As you're running and you're keeping pace, you take the shot back, uh, uh, the shot of water, and it hydrates you and it encourages you to keep going to the next marker. May these opportunities in the middle of the day this week be like that shot of water, that that yeah. boost of encouragement that's yeah. needed to keep pressing on. That's good. We're not going to give up. We're going to stand with one another. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity to be intimidated throughout all this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's opportunity for me to be uh, intimidated, and I said in an earlier video that. Um, you know, part of being afraid is not automatically stepping into fear, right? right? Uh, f- anxiety, uh, feelings, uh, feeling anxious or even concerned. Jesus, who was 100% God yeah. and 100% man, uh, felt that anguish and afraid in the final moments of his earthly ministry. In Luke chapter 22, you can find this where Jesus uh, it says, according to his custom, he got away from the group, the, the 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 mass of people that were always following him, and he went to a place of prayer. And while he was praying, he was dealing with the the anxiety and fear of the biggest challenge that he was about to face. He was going to be taken captive, beaten, and hung on a cross. It says that while he felt the anguish, his response was to pray even more earnestly. So my encouragement, our encouragement today. If you're feeling overwhelmed or the anxiety is creeping up on you, we, we have a solution, a model in Jesus to, to follow. That we need to be people that go to prayer even more in this challenging time. Amen? Amen. So I was originally supposed to be in Australia right now with Becky. And we had multiple uh, speaking engagements that were scheduled. And weeks or maybe longer ago, um, I had reached out to John and asked if, if you would be available, number one. Number two, do you have a message in your heart? And uh, and he did. So it was the original schedule for John to bring a message, and he sought God on this. And we've been meeting throughout the week. And um, I, I really feel in my heart, and John John confirms that, yeah. that the message that he that he has is for us, and we're going to stick with that. And uh, even though we're going to interact and work together today, sure. um, I think this is an important message for us to hear. Uh, what are we titling it? Title is Faith and Determination. Faith and Determination. Okay, so part of our our uh, normal church service would involve having some video interaction. Uh, we'd have scriptures on the screen. So if you need, now would be an opportunity to grab a piece of paper, uh, grab a pencil or a pen, and you can jot these down. I think it's important for people to yes. go back and reference later, yeah. right? Uh, uh, there's a lot of a lot of opportunities for us to get caught up in busyness, even if we're at home. Uh, we need to pause and go back to some of these verses that, that God's placed in our heart for the body of Christ yes. to be to be encouraged. Now, because of some of the video interaction that John had originally planned, that's not going to be available for us today, this weekend. And if we're doing this multiple weeks in a row, we'll get better at making these interactive. But today, you're just going to have to allow John, the storyteller, uh, to reveal some of the background videos uh, that he was going to play And uh, uh, so, John, let's just dive in. Faith and determination. Uh, God gave me this message um, probably over a month ago. Uh, It was even before Pastor had asked me to speak. And uh, just because God was speaking these things to my heart and encouraging me with them. And and in this, I I want you to understand that talking about faith is not questioning whether or not any of us have enough faith, regardless of what our decisions might be through this whole process. What it really means is, uh, I don't know about you, but I need my faith strengthened. Uh, in Mark, it talks about the man who brought his child to Jesus and said, your, your disciples couldn't heal him. Yeah. And, and he said, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. What, shared, an, what an honest prayer, right? Yeah. I shared this That's a little bit on, on Thursday night with, with the men in the, the men's group. Uh, I need my faith helped sometimes. Yeah. Because as much as I believe, there are times when I, I have that little doubt right in the back of my head, and it just doesn't want, it doesn't want to go away. Yeah. And I need the Lord to do that, and I need to bring it to Him. Uh, sometimes, on a daily basis, sometimes even on an hourly basis, just so Especially I. Especially times like this, right? Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So um, God gave me this this message. I just want to I want you to reference 
Hebrews chapter 11 and, and verse 1. The very, very famous uh, scripture, uh, probably one of the, uh, the greatest faith chapters that there is in the Bible. Amen. And it just simply says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of of things not seen. And, and Pastor has referenced this, this verse so many times in different messages that, that you spoke simply because it is so vital for us to understand. Yeah. Um, it starts out, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, substance means there's something there. There's something that we can hold on to or right. it's, it's real. And a lot of times we don't see this in our lives. Uh, we say, yeah, I believe, I believe. But where is that substance? Where is that thing that we're holding on to? And God makes these things evident to us as we trust him, as we believe in him, as we move forward in him. And the last part of the verse, the evidence of things not seen. And that's so important because you can't convict anybody in court. Well, most of the time. <laughs> Not going there, but unless you have solid evidence, right? And it's it's kind of a oxymoron there. Evidence of things not seen. Um, and as I was looking, just looking at the scripture, and God put a uh, a video clip in my mind, and I'm going to do my best to describe this video clip to you. It's um, like I said, it works much better if, if number one, if you've seen the movie, yeah. That, that helps. I, I think you're a good storyteller. You'll well, get it. Well, hopefully. And other, also, just if you allow yourself to feel the emotion and the, the circumstances that are there. We know it's a movie, but when I saw this, I thought, wow, that will preach. So I just want to describe this to you. Um, see, because faith doesn't always look safe. Matter of fact, rarely does faith look safe. Or, or logical. Yeah, really not logical. Yeah. But And it can be scary. When we Absolutely. are asked to do something that is totally outside of our realm. The, the whole chapter of Hebrews 11 goes on to say, you know, by faith, Moses, by faith, Abraham, by faith. All, and all these people were doing amazing things and things that were totally outside of their comfort zone. So but, let's talk about that just for a minute. I don't mean to jump in on you. Go ahead. Uh, I think that's a great correlation because the writer talks about this, this faith as an internal uh, substance mm -hmm. and, and evidence that we... That we first stand on in our in our mind, our imagination, before we actually step out into that. But he makes that link there right. about all these generals, if you will, of faith. Yeah. That by faith they you fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And so, I think you're going to head there. That faith becomes the proof, the evidence outwardly when action is taken. Right. 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 Okay. And the action has has been taken. By the way, this is the first time I've ever done tag team preaching. I, I kind of <laughs> like it. I, I do too. You're doing good. Um, the unknown is always scary, like we said. Now, right here is when I was going to play this clip from the movie Indiana Jones and the Great Crusade. One of my favorites. Where yeah, where he goes and he's trying to find the the cup of Christ. The uh, um, I forget the word they called it. I think that was it. The Oh, shame on us. We should know this. <laughs> we should. I should have watched the, the, the cup from me. the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, no, the cup from that he took the communion from. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Last yeah, Supper. Yeah. Um, the Holy Grail. There we go. He's trying to find the Holy Grail. So uh, he's going through all these different tests. And because the, the Nazis were trying to make him find this for them, because they thought it would give them eternal life, um, they didn't understand what that meant, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. They shoot his father. Mm hmm. And they send him off down this dark little crevasse into wherever to try to find the Holy Grail. And Filled he with all a, kinds of clever booby traps. Oh, yeah. Right? Gotta have yeah. the clever booby traps. It's Indiana Jones. <laughs> right. But as they're going along, uh, he gets to this spot and he stops and looks down. And there is this huge uh, canyon almost. It's, it's 50, 60 feet wide. Easy. And he's looking at it and he's like, oh, no. And that's what he's saying in his mind anyway. And he looks at his little book that tells him everything he's supposed to, you know, all the little hints and everything. And it just says there, a man who has faith will cross and he will have to just make the leap of faith. There's this dramatic moment where they, the camera switches over to Indiana's dad and he whispers underneath his breath, 
you know, Indy, you have to believe. Yeah. You have to believe. Yeah. And that, that that's important to me because he says, all of us have to believe. Yeah. So he's standing at this canyon and he's looking out and there's nothing between him and the other side. And he reads it again and he goes, you have to believe. You have to believe. It's a step of faith. It's a step of faith. And then you can see the decision finally comes to his to his, to his mind and his heart. And he he stands there. He literally clasps, grasps at his chest, at his heart, closes, closes his, his eyes, eyes, and then just sticks his leg way out. Then he just stares blankly forward, and he steps. And his foot hits something solid. And it's at that point where I, I love the illustration and the way it looks, his face. All of a sudden, not only is it relief, but there's joy there. Yeah, yeah. It was real. Yeah. What he didn't think could even possibly happen was real. And then he proceeds to go across that little bridge that was made there to look exactly like the cavern. So... Oh, yeah, great point. Can I jump in on that? I'll go. So, so the camera kind of pans out now. And, and you see that there, there was a bridge made of rock the whole time. But from his angle straight on, it was camouflaged, right? Mm-hmm. So this is really a great opportunity for us to think about Ephesians 1.3, that God has already provided every spiritual blessing for That's us. Right. That's right. Your faith didn't make it show up. It was already there. But it was our, our act of faith that revealed it. Man, we need to hear that more than ever right now, Amen. right? I mean, Amen. There's, it's, God is not... Uh, pressuring us to to come up with or create things that aren't already there that's right but it's going to require our faith uh to make that step before it's actually revealed amen awesome and pastor's reading my notes Uh oh (laughs) sorry that's all right but as as he does as he goes through this he walks through and then he gets to the other side and he looks down and he grabs a handful of sand and throws it back across the bridge and, and to me, that's like him saying, I'm, lo- I'm showing you the way. He's making a way and showing a way for everybody else around him. And uh, for us, when we step out in faith and we walk through that, we show the way for other people to come. That this is real, that stepping out in faith works. And then I love what he says right before he goes into the next portion of the cave. He yells out and he says, I made it. Yeah. And and church, we say that to you literally to each other when we step out in faith and God does what he promises he will do because he always will. Amen. And he says, I made it, which means you can make it too. You know, sometimes I think we could uh, make that illustration uh, uh, align only with someone who might be in pastoral roles, Mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, uh, let's just talk to the fathers right now of households. Let's talk to the moms, the spiritual moms. Uh, Let's talk to the individuals who by your act of faith, you stepping out, You're becoming a leader, an influencer was what leaders are, and you're showing the way for others. We we need to be stable, right? We need, uh, being a person of faith doesn't doesn't make you a nut. Uh, It doesn't always line up with logic, but when you step out, you show people what's possible. Right. Uh, We're all called to this. That's all I'm really wanting to say on that. That's right. That's right. People say like, wow, that happened to you. You did that? No, I didn't do anything. I merely took the step. It's that action thing we were talking about before. I put right. the action to what God asked me to do, and God took care of the rest. Right. That's so important. People sometimes think that, that God asks us to do crazy things like that. Uh, so, you know, they'll say, I'm going to crash and burn if this happens. I mean, Indiana Jones had to think that when he took the step. Mm-hmm. He'd probably think, well, here I go. But we don't crash and burn. Amen. We, we stand and overcome. And that's, that's a big, well, that's night and day difference, really. Amen. But um, God doesn't take pleasure in our failures. He's not some vindictive God that's, that gets Amen. pleasure out of seeing us fail and saying, right. aha, see, you shouldn't have went that way. No, no, no. God, he's the almighty, all-loving God that plans for our success. Amen. That's good word. Say that again. I mean, he is the almighty, all-loving God yes. that plans for our success. Jeremiah 29, 11, very familiar scripture, but it's something that I believe we need to hold on to. Amen. And understand, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. This is not a preacher declaring this. Right. This is not somebody, you know, off to the side. This is de- the Lord declaring this. Plans to prosper you. Amen. Yeah. 
and to not harm you. you Plans Jesus. to give you hope and a future. Amen. And this is a scripture, if you hold on to nothing else from this morning, grab onto this. God has plans for you, plans for prosperity, plans for hope, Amen. plans for strength, plans for health, plans for a future. And I thoroughly believe that. Amen. And if I didn't, I'd be off doing something else, probably twiddling my thumbs and crying in my basement. So I'm a little nervous to jump in because I don't know if I'm going to Go. step into your notes again <laughs> by accident. That's okay. Um, so when we're when we're facing the, the challenges that we're facing even right now, this is very real. Uh, one thing in a, in a strange way that we can find comfort is that this isn't just a, a localized thing. That's this right. isn't just our community or our church or our state. This is a global thing. That's right. And so we're all in this together. And I think right now, even the things that we're learning through uh, the disappointment of this, I mean, I, I don't think anyone foresaw this kind of thing coming to pass, or I don't think anyone um, was set up thinking that they were going to have this, this break moment where everything just stopped. Yeah. But we can also, uh, with the right perspective, we can learn from this. We can yeah. be strengthened through this. If, if I can... Um, James chapter 1, I want to read this to you, uh, talking about the, the challenges that we face in these moments. What is it actually doing for us? What is it actually doing for you? Uh, this is the, the Passion Translation, and I, it's one of my favorites lately, and I've been re referencing it a lot. But this is James chapter 1, verse number 2. Uh, he writes, my fellow believers, so he's writing to Christians. My fellow believers, when it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, are, are you feeling like it's difficult right now? I am. This yeah. is challenging. Can't even find toilet paper. <laughs> Come, on. <laughs> Come on. Nothing but difficulties. Finding toilet paper is the things that you thought you'd never <laughs> find difficulty with. See, it is an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. That's right. He goes on to write in verse number three, for you know that when your faith is tested... Your faith is being tested right now, not by God, right. but by the circumstances that we're mm -hmm. facing. He says that when our faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure. Look at somebody that you're watching this video with and say, you need to endure. You, you need, need to endure. endure. <laughs> right on. Uh, power within you to endure all things. That's everything. Nothing is going to catch God off guard. He doesn't find himself surprised by anything right. that we're right. facing. That we're going to endure all things. That's right. And then as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. So Amen. what we're facing right now is a drag. Yeah. Uh, I'm not enjoying it that much, to be honest with you, but I'm, I'm going to make a determination, like James says here, that I'm going to take everything that I can from this. I'm going to extract everything that I can from this because I believe God's using this to perfect areas in my life that need to be strengthened, That's right. right? Need to be fortified. Join with me on that. Amen. May, may that be our perspective as we move forward because there's plenty of opportunities to complain. Oh yeah. Right? I mean, so not everyone is, is quarantined at home. We have people that are, are still on the job. People thank God for it, truck drivers and right. people in the medical field. Thank Amen. you for serving those Amen. in the grocery stores. Um, and, and all the jobs that maybe we've overlooked so many times, we're really grateful for you. Yeah. But what we're what we're gonna what we're gonna do in these moments, instead of joining into the complaining, instead of going into the as my one of my, my old friends used to say, the mully grubs, uh, let's I don't even know where that came from. Uh, but basically let's not get off into the weeds and join in with the uh, the complaining and the and the things that everyone seems to be doing, but all the more, let's be a voice of inspiration, Amen. right? Voice Amen. of encouragement. So faith is something that shows up when we actually take a step. Faith is strengthened, as John said, when uh, we face challenging things. Right. And our confidence and endurance, like, like a person who lifts weights or runs races, you, you don't run further by doing less, and you don't lift more by lifting less. It's the strength training right. of our faith that's going to cause us to endure. Amen. So let's, let's go into the transition part here. So faith is, is the first part of the but. Determination. Determination. Let's talk a little bit right. about that. Determination. Um, now, you know what? In my notes, I don't have where the scripture is, but it's from found in Philippians. Okay. <laughs> 
or verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward yeah. to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal Amen. for the prize of the high call, excuse me, of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And none, I don't, I haven't arrived yet. <laughs> Me either. And, and where I'm supposed to be and where I want to be. Yeah. But Paul says one thing he does. In other words, he's, he's putting a focus on his life. He's not just saying, well, I'll just kind of go on through life and I hope I get there. He says, no, one thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a focus on this. I am going to press forward. Amen. I'm not going to just sit around. I'm not going to sit here in my pity party. Come I'm on. going to get up and I'm going to go and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Sometimes right now that might mean just getting up, taking care of your family and, and being, you know, self-quarantined at home. And if you have to do that, if that's part of your situation and you don't have a job right now that, that you're able to go to because they've eliminated or not eliminated, but or mandated. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Tell everybody to stay home. Uh, but that that's fine. Then you do that and you do it with everything you have. Yeah. My wife and I still watch my granddaughters twice a week, and nothing's changed. They still come over. We still play. We they yeah. still drive me crazy, and <laughs> and the little one is getting so mobile now; it's unbelievable. But as we as Christians move forward and say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it the best I've got. Yeah. I'm going to press. And there's a big difference between trying and pressing. All right, unpack that a little bit. Well. Trying, you just kind of, you try. But when you are willing so to So are we kind of saying that's kind of half-hearted? Uh, it can be. Okay. Uh, it's like Mr. Miyagi said to daniel son. He, he looked at him and said, uh, he said, don't give me uh, okay. He says, give me karate yes or karate no. He says, karate maybe. He says, you in the middle of the road get squish like grape. Come on, put in, the, put in the comments right there. Karate yes, Miyagi chapter two, verse one. <laughs> But as, don't, don't get me laughing. I can't do this. But as we um, as we move forward, as we tr not just try but commit. Yeah. Determination means commitment. Yeah. And and here I was uh, going to use the clip from uh, how many of you by show of hands have seen the Facing the Giants? Ah, oh, great movie. One of okay. my favorites. Um, at least put in comments below now that you saw Facing the Giants. Hashtag Facing the Giants. Uh, great movie. In one part of this movie, one of the um, main characters, one of the boys who's a leader on the football team, uh, he, they're kind of complaining about the next team that they're going to face. And they're saying, well, you know, we're not going to beat these guys. And the coach asks, why? He says, because they're stronger than we are. And the coach looks at him and says, you're stronger than you think. Hmm. And he says, come here. He says, the guy's name's Brock. He says, come over here. Okay, this is the video clip I'm, I'm putting into your mind, you know, via osmosis or whatever. And we're going, he says, okay, grab Jeremy. Jeremy, come over here. And they're go, they do what is called a death crawl. In essence, what the one boy does, he gets up on his hands and his feet only, facing down on the ground. And the other boy will lay on his back, grabbing his shoulder pads to hold on to him. And then they will crawl as far as they can, which, believe me, it is a workout. But this time he says to him, he says, what do you want to do? You want me to get to the 30? I think I can make the 30. He says, no, I want you to give me all you have. And here's how we're going to do this. He blindfolds him. That's good. See, because sometimes we, we only, we don't make our goals nearly as far out as God has given us the ability to do. That's true. And uh, when we just look at this one little goal, uh, short goals, small goals, small accomplishment. When we have the goal that's endless and open, yeah, we can do amazing things. Yeah. So he lay, he gets down on the ground and he ties the blindfold around him and he just says, "You make me one promise. You give me everything you have." And as he begins his death crawl and he's pushing and pushing and going and he starts saying, "This is hard." He says, "It's not too hard." 
coach is right there with him. And yeah, he's kind of yelling at him. He's being a coach, but he's yelling encouragement. He says, you can do yeah. this. Give me all you got. That's not enough. I know you have more. I know you can do it. And he keeps going. He's a killer he says, scene. I have to be at the 50 by now. I have to be at the 50. Am I at the, and he keeps going. He says, give me 10 more steps. Give me 20 more steps. Whatever it was. And he kept going and kept going. And finally he says, I don't have any more. And he falls down. And he says, I have to have been to the 50 yet. I have to have gotten there. And the coach says, take your blindfold off. Because you're in the end zone. You went 100 yards. Yeah. But I love that. You're in the end zone. Yeah. You've scored. Yeah. You have completed. You fulfilled yeah. what I asked you to do in reality. Yeah. Not because you thought you could only get this far, but because God says, I can take you all the way. Yeah. And one of the funny little things at the end that I just love. And he tells me, he says, you just carried a 140-pound man a hundred yards. He says, I know that you can give more. You're a leader. Folks, we're all leaders. God has called us to lead our families, yes. our friends, yeah. our loved ones, and ourselves. Our, our, <laughs> yeah. And he looks, and the kid looks at, him, at the boy that was carried. He says, uh, Coach, uh, Coach, kept interrupting. He finally says, Jeremy, what is it? He says, I weigh 160. <laughs> Didn't even know how much he was carrying. Yeah. Carried more than he thought he could. Farther than he ever thought he could. Why? Because he was determined. Yeah. He said, I'm not going to just sit here and just say, this is all I have. And this is going to defeat me because it's stronger than me. No. We have more power in us than we imagine because we have Christ. Amen. We we cut ourselves Mm -hmm. short. Oh, yeah. We have all his power in us. Yeah. And for us to think, you're you're limiting God. And I know we don't want to do that. I, in that scene, it's worth looking up on YouTube. The coach is just, I mean, pounding the ground, shouting and screaming. The veins are coming out of his neck. And uh, I really want this point to be made that uh, I think illustratively that could be the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is 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 charging and, and commanding in a way that's you can do more, you can do better and pressing on. And in the middle yes. of it, it can feel like he's causing you pain, but he's not causing you pain. He might be causing you discomfort, but... When we listen and yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit who's cheering us on, right. we will go farther, much farther than what we think we can do in our own strength. Amen. 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 I just want, I, through this, I want to make just a couple observations before I'm done. And uh, one of them is, one of the things that I noticed in the video clip also, the kids who were sitting around laughing and kind of making the hot, you know, yuck, yuck about this whole thing, he's making them do this. All of a sudden, as he kept going further, the lapping stopped. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, the boys started getting up, standing up. They're all sitting down, walking towards what was happening, getting closer. And this one act that this boy did inspired an entire team of young men because they saw that there is more to give than what we think. Yeah. And it was an encouragement to them. <laughs> so blindfolded with our... With our, excuse me, with our natural eyes, we're only going to see so far. We're only going to do so much. When we blindfold ourselves to the normal, to the average, and we allow God's supernatural mm. to come in. Oh, that's good. Then what happens is we're not seeing what the world thinks. We're not seeing what we thought before. We're seeing yeah. what God, well, we're allowing God to put in us and to allow us to go to places we never thought we could because we, we can't see it. He had to empty his heart and let God go in him. He had to empty what he thought and let God take him where he could go. Yeah. I know it hurts. What the coach kept saying. I know that hurts. Keep going. And as Pastor was saying, the discomfort. Yeah, that hurts. I don't like being uncomfortable. Uh, I don't like it when there's a little pebble in my back or something like that or something stuck in my shirt or my, hate my feet. Oh, man, if I get a little <laughs> tiny grain of sand, you can ask my wife. And it's a, I know it and I've got to get it out of there. I mean, it's like drives me crazy. But more than that, you know, think about having a rock in your shoe. I don't want to walk on that. Right. But you know, sometimes we have to walk with a rock. But when we get to the other point, part of that, when you get to the end, it's all worth it. Yeah. And, and and the second point is I just want to make your giving all is contagious. 
Amen. People will see that giving all is the way to go and they will go in that way. Slowly, everyone starts to come around. Yeah. And they start, there's no more laughing and saying, well, that guy's crazy. That's never going to work. All of a sudden they're saying, yeah, I can do that too. I can get to the end zone myself. Awesome. We become examples. Yeah. And, and examples of strength that come from giving all. He made it all the way to the end zone. And all I've got to say, church, look up. You're in the end zone. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. So going, going back to the Philippians verse, I'm, I'm not sure if it's chapter 3 or chapter 4 where Paul's talking about pressing forward. But uh, the wording that you use, if you wouldn't mind going back, I think you, I think you read that and I've even pressing read. upward. Yes, upward. I press upward. Upward. You know, the I once read that nobody falls or trips onto the top of the mountain. That's right. You, you press forward, you climb, and perhaps you feel like you've stumbled and, and you've fallen down. I want to encourage you, no matter where you're at in your journey with Jesus, when you stumble and fall, you don't slide all the way back down to the base. No. You might have slipped back a little bit, but all you need to do is stand back up, find your footing, and, right. and begin to climb again. That's right. Um, you may have to do that routinely, daily. Uh, I know I am. I'm, I'm having to grab every thought, um, every intimidation, every concern, uh, you know, that uh, that the, the, the symptoms of what we're hearing about. And I'm not talking about just the virus, but I mean, this, the what potential unrest and challenges that are ahead of us. Yeah. If we're not careful, we will drift into a place of hopelessness and we lose sight of a, of a possible good. And really the hope that we have is anchored in Jesus. Yeah. And it says in that verse in Hebrews that we're anchored behind the veil, meaning that my strength is not of this world, it's of his. That's right. And it, going back to, I like how you said how the, the referencing the guy who carried the young man, he emptied himself. The Beatitudes in Matthew 5, I think it's verse number 5. That he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. My friend, uh, Pastor Steve Eden, paraphrases that. And he says it this way. Uh, All of heaven is available to those who are poor enough to receive it. Wow. Simply meaning that when I'm so full on something else, myself, mm -hmm. conceit, ego, fear, intimidation, the wrong ideas, uh, there's not room for something new. So if I'm willing, like John said, to empty myself yeah. of all of these inferior things, and begin to receive everything that God has already promised me, uh, I'm going to find myself yeah. taking one step after another. And before you know it, uh, I've gone a lot further. We've all gone a lot further That's right. than uh, than we thought possible. That's right. Amen. Amen. Good word. Why don't you uh, close us out in prayer, John? And uh, we'll, we'll sign off from this live feed okay. uh, for now. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for bringing this to our hearts. And I, I just pray, God, for everyone mm -hmm. listening. Lord, none of us have arrived. And, and we're all making this journey. And I pray that you would just give us the strength. Number one, our faith. Increase it. Lord, help us to put the focus in the right place and understand yeah. that we are going forward and that you are there for us. And God, I also pray that uh, in our hearts that we would be determined that we are going to make it through this. Yes. That there's nothing that's going to, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. And I believe that. And God, we are we are going to be in times where we see people panic, and and yes, they they buy all the toilet paper, they buy all the bread, and they buy, you know what? I'm not a person of panic. Amen. You have made me a person of Lord strength and power. Amen. And overcomer, and that's who I am. And God, help us all to believe that, especially when we have those little doubts that come in, because we can go to you and say, Lord, help my unbelief, mm -hmm. and you always will. I pray blessings upon our families, God, and all those listening, God. I pray that you would just give wisdom to our leadership, God, to the to the president and, and all those that are involved in, in trying to solve this situation in our world. And God, I know that we are going to come out the other side, and it's going to be yeah. amazing what we are going to see we through you. It. And I believe it is sooner than later. Thank you for your love to us, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us and taking this journey with us, uh, staying flexible, stay in prayer, uh, purge often, take care of the little doubts right. when they're babies so they don't turn into giants later. <laughs> and, uh, and, and listen, we're here to be available to pray. Yeah. Uh, if we have to use technology, we can't meet in person. Uh, we'll do whatever we need to do uh, to stand together and get through this together. Amen. In Jesus' name. Enjoy the rest of your day with your family and friends. Yeah. 
Uh, we'll be on again soon.